Well, three days after the ouster of Speaker Kevin McCarthy, the House remains at a standstill. The same cannot be said when it comes to the race to succeed him. Two high-profile contenders have emerged. Another lawmaker also in the mix. And former President Trump has already made his endorsement. Correspondent Joe Khalil live for us there on Capitol Hill. So, Joe, where do things stand right now? Yeah, so it was major news that we got the endorsement from Donald Trump yesterday. I can tell you, if you're asking the question about who is going to be the next Speaker of the House, that is an unanswerable question today, at least, according to every Republican who I've spoken with so far. But yesterday, Donald Trump did weigh in, saying that he is giving his endorsement to Jim Jordan. He posted on Truth Social saying that uh, Jordan has his complete and total endorsement. Not entirely surprising. Jordan has always been one of President Trump's strongest, if not the strongest ally that he has here on Capitol Hill. Uh, President Trump was also set to be here next week for a candidate forum, as Republicans are calling it, where essentially the entire House Republican conference is going to get together behind closed doors and deliberate as to who they think their speaker should be. The hope is they want to unite behind one person before they actually get to the House floor and cast a ballot. So we don't see a repeat of January, where you had 15 different rounds before eventually Kevin McCarthy locked it up. Uh, but whether that's actually going to happen, still a big unanswered question. Nicole, you've got Jim Jordan here, and we can put up uh, some of his bio. This is actually a person who has been around for a long time. He's got the support of many members of his own party. He's been uh, a strong ally of both Kevin McCarthy, but as we mentioned also of former President Trump, currently the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, where he has been sort of the face of a lot of these investigations into um, Hunter Biden and, and others. Uh, then you've also got Steve Scalise, who currently is the number two Republican in the House. He still has what is likely the most support of anybody right now. He's 57. He has an infrastructure around him. He's already been doing the things you do in leadership, like campaigning for a number of members, being in their districts, raising money for them. All of those things go a long way. So he still has quite a bit of support. In fact, maybe the quote unquote front runner, if there is one right now. Someone you may not have heard of yet is Kevin Hearn. He's a Republican who's at the top of what's known as the Republican Study Committee. Uh, he's sort of the dark horse, but if you talk to Republican members and staff, there's a lot of respect for him. Everyone does seem to like him. And so if there's no decision between Jordan or Scalise, maybe you do see people start to fall back on what may be a compromise option uh, in Kevin Hearn. A lot that is still yet to be answered, as we mentioned, Nicole. Next week, Republicans hope to figure this out at their candidate forum, as I mentioned on Tuesday. On Monday, there is talk, and it's not finalized yet, that all three of the men we just highlighted might do a combined group interview uh, with another network as a show of unity. So that is not, again, entirely set in stone, but the plan and the hope is that happens. Tuesday, you have the forum, and by Wednesday at the earliest, Republicans want to actually vote on a speaker. All of that, though, up in the air and unpredictable right now, Nicole. Yeah, so many things are unpredictable. All right, Joe Khalil, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.